Yeah. All right, I've got five o'clock on the hour. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order April 27, 2023. I'd like to ask Brother Coleman for a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we just want to thank you for the night, Lord. We thank you for another meeting in this month, Lord. We thank you for these that press the way out in the rain, Lord. We just give you the praise and honor. And we ask you to just be in Hartford tonight, Lord, in our meeting, Lord, that we get an understanding of all things that we do. And Lord, we just want to thank you for each and every one of the officials and the mayor tonight, Lord, and these that press the way out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Before you have the minutes of the last meeting, uh, after being reviewed, I've asked for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting. Uh, uh, hold on. Give me that. All right. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like side. Motion carries. <coughs> Uh, Tara, do you have anything to bring forward? Okay. All right, before you have the financial reports, bank statements, income statements, and account, account payables. Uh, after being reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the can financial can reports. A, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I'm new, so I'm just curious on the uh, like check register. What is the refund to UMS account? There's like 12. That's where people have moved out of Hartford, and that is the, the leftover of their deposit after their balance has been paid in full. Okay. Right. Yep. That's a good question. Glad you're looking. I had a first and second down here, I do believe. Yeah. First by Tony? Yeah. Who seconded it? I did. I did. Mayor Bell. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. Aye. Pulls like side. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we have action in old business ordinance 2023-01 on the business license. This is the second reading. And I will open the floor for discussion here. Um, I'll give everybody a brief little bit to say what they want to say on this ordinance briefly and then the council, I'll ask if you, if you all have anything to say on, on this, and then we'll have to, if we have a motion, we will do a roll call vote. So, if anybody wants to go first on this ordinance. Well, I don't care to go first. Okay. I'm Sherilyn Ward, and I'm co-owner of Sword Heads, Hits and Sundries over here. And I've read the ordinance, and it actually, you know, I think it's it's very fair the way that it is worded and the way that it reads. Um, I've, I've done some figuring, and I know the main problem for us is we feel, and, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but Karen and I feel very unappreciated because we pay property taxes, we pay inventory taxes, we pay our uh, employee taxes, we pay uh, what off, I mean all those things, um, and you know, plus our business license that we have, you know, we've got a brick and mortar store so we have all of our expenses as far as electricity and heat and all of that also. And I'm, we're not trying to be ugly, and we don't mind food trucks coming in, but we just hate that it's not fair, okay? When the food trucks are here, if it's like it is right now, and they pay $75 for a business license for a year, just like we do, right. they could be here every single day for 21 cents. 21 cents a day. We can't open our place for 21 cents a day. The way it's written in here, it's still fair. $100 a month, if they come every single day of the month, that's still only 
a month. I mean, three dollars a day per month. We would go somewhere and set up for three dollars a day. When you go set up at a, uh, you know, like at a fair or something like that, you pay a much larger fee than that. So we're not we're not saying don't have food trucks. We we like them. We love eating things from food trucks. But we just want a little bit of equity, and that's what we're looking for, Mayor. Do you have something you need to say to me? Does anybody? Uh, Lynn Thompson with the Copa Cafe. Uh, just just some, some history. Uh, we came here uh, five years ago, did the coffee shop. Uh, when the lot went on, didn't know anybody in town much. My wife's from here, I'm not. But I, I'll say this. Uh, this city actually approved a coffee shop downtown to do a fundraiser for a school here in town. Uh, being from out of town, that was kind of a slap in the face. I'm like, dang, okay. And, and let me get back up a little bit. I was on the Economic Development Committee for Hartford for a while. I dropped that because right after the coffee shop. Because I'm like, you're really not trying to help businesses come into town if you're going to call from Central City, which were a friend of ours, that owned that coffee shop, have them park right in front of their shop, and then these people walk from here instead of coming to see me. Right. And what kind of sense does that make? I don't know if I need to say anything else for the rest of the night. Because if you own a business, let me do a portable in front of you. Tell me what you think. Because I can do portable printing van easy. It's easy. Because you can do it online, most of it anyway. What kind of sense does that make if we're trying to grow Hartford? Secondly, it says the environment that... Well, when I opened it, I had people come to me as I was doing the remodel and said, yeah, I don't know if you're going to make it here, dude. I mean, nobody, you know, I mean, it's just, it's tough. People are different. I'm like, you know, I'm going to do me. People don't drink coffee, and, and Lord willing, I'm going to make a living, right? But then when you start seeing things like this take place, you go, dang, not only are they not helpful, right, supporting your business, they actually kicking you in the knees when you ain't looking. I, I, I don't know. So, I'm not well spoken, not very educated, but common sense to me, what's the purpose of the city and the city committee to businesses, right? If I'm responsible to you for things, what do you do for me besides kick me in the legs, take them out from under me? I don't understand that. that, that I get frustrated with that kind of stuff. And, and, and common sense and logic, and dang, it's a small town. We all want to be neighbors. And then you're going to pull somebody in from another county? Direct competition. It wasn't like, it wasn't like slick back doing barbecue downtown and not sell coffee. It wasn't like that. It's coffee, pal. We're sticking right back in your face. I mean, that, that's a fight. To me, that's a fight. Now, Terry and, and Petey won't do it again because they, they didn't know that I was running this, but they friends of mine. Went to school with them. I, they apologize. How embarrassing is that? Hmm. Right? I mean, it just sets up all this stuff. Now, you know, so I don't have much time to go give me. I've got a couple of things now that you've got me rolling. Um, so, if, if, so what happens if, if, if we do food trucks? Okay. I have no clue when they're coming. I'm prepping for my day, right? And then they show up on my parking lot. Everything that I've cooked, prepped for that day, you can't hardly, I don't sell it for the next day, right? Some of it you can't, some of it you can't. So now not only they take business, I've lost product <coughs> and business, right? Had to send people home because it's slower. I, I, I don't know when they're coming. Right. I heard that, well, we do that because we, we love want them to come in because of nonprofit and give people variety. You ever stop and talk to them? There, there's uh, Andy's pretzel, right? I mean, from here to that door from my shop. I want to talk to them. Hey, I got a place I can rent you. Oh, we don't have to pay rent. We just come sit in the parking lot. Oh, okay. Well, you raise money for it. Oh, no, we're just doing business. 
You see what I mean? So who's, who's checking it if you're going to do this? Who's, who's keeping them in check, paying their dues, doing it the right way? Well, that's something I will say, and that's a problem that we're going to have either way with this process, however it is voted, I don't know who's going to be able to do that. I mean, my police force is tied up pretty pretty regularly, so I understand, but who is going to police that? That is a good question. Who Who's going to be responsible to police well, that? Well, if I don't pay taxes, somebody comes to see me. Exactly. But right. who's going to be responsible for that? Because should, be should that be on my police department, though? Should that be with my office staff in here? Well, maybe that should be written into the law. Somebody should figure it out. You want me in a meeting when you sit down and talk about how to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, no, I get it. I get it. But that was, just a, that was just a question that we're still trying to figure out. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against it or anything. Let me give you another one. This one's even better. Then I'll, I'll, I'll stop because there's, I, I can go on. I mean, right. 10 minutes worth of notes and right. I'm done. Here's a bigger one for me. What are we giving to the next generation? Here's an example. Right? It, it, not, not even as council people, but just as a group of adults to the teenagers and younger ones, right? What are we doing for them? I have people that I've hired don't even know how to use a broom. I'm teaching them how to ice in cinnamon rolls. Yeah. I could not make Rice Krispies this morning that I would sell. They were too flat. No one's at home teaching them. But if I wasn't there, I've got eight people on staff, probably do another eight to other location. That's a lot for a little independent guy. It is. Right? It is. You look at the payroll and I tell you. Yep. Who's doing anything for this next generation? Right. This food truck come in here, there's two people that are not even local from Annie's. I don't know where they're from. Millbrook County, I think. They're not helping their community. My people leave. I pay them on Friday. They leave. They got money in their pocket. They go places here and continue to grow and build. Annie got in their truck, took off with my six bucks. Who's getting it? Right. Secondly, who's taking care of those? Those. I, I've got another one. She gets out of school. She's coming to me full time. Is Annie's doing that? Shogun's doing that? That's the bigger responsibility. I don't care about their fees and their taxes, all that crap. I'm not going to be here in 10, 15, average guy, 75 years old, it's gone, right? But what about my son's 21, my daughter's 19? What about Annie that's, that's going to college? Audrey that were just hired out of school, right? To help her to get ready to go to college. Who's doing that? Right. They just hit and run. So there has to be a responsibility as citizens, let alone council. For those things. Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything on this ordinance as well? I just want to say I'm Brian Wilson on Slickback Barbecue. I've been I've been running a food truck longer than I am, I think almost seven years now. Uh, I've seen it all, done it all. I understand his frustration, completely get it. And that's why I can sit here and say that since, and I think that you all would probably agree, since the day that you all had sore heads, have you seen me down there by the radio station? Yeah, but... No, I mean, have you seen me down there since y'all been there? Slip back? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, we have. Oh, yeah. You've been down there, yeah. At the radio station? Yes, yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah. When? Well, well, you have been because, we, oh, absolutely. I'm you actually, see me in the last... Well, I don't know if it was you, but it was your truck. Right. It's, back. it's been, yes, we've been open for... Four years. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I was down there. I've been going down there for seven years, but I have not been going there for quite some time now. Probably the last maybe couple years, but before the end. Well, of regardless. <laughs> in the business world here, it's about competition. We have expenses, and I know the expenses on the other side of it too. I have expenses just like you have expenses. And I know, like, he, like he's speaking about, I contribute to the county. I contribute to the county's youth. I know that I do. I can attest to that. I can say that I do. But the thing that we can sit here and argue about all we want is about being respectful to the people that are around you. And that's what I'm trying to get at with, with Annie Ann's pretzels. The, pe the reason why they're there is because of the permission of the, of the lot owner. If they don't give them that permission, they can't be there. 
So that comes back to the people that own that parking lot. If that, because I was asked by Dollar General one time to come up there and I said, did you get this cleared by the Sphinx? Because if they don't tell me yes, then I don't go. So who That's, gives Shogun's permissions to park I have no idea. I've never been there. They've never been there. The library. So. The library. So that's a city street. They don't own that. That's a state highway. It's a state highway. State highway. Yeah, I mean, so anybody can park there. Which we have no control. Yeah, we don't have no control over yeah. state highway. And that's that's, that's the other thing with okay, Signature Healthcare. They call. They ask if they can, if you can come down there. We're on their parking lot. We're on their property. It's it's and I'm just saying like I go there every other week or something like that. I mean, they have somebody there every day. Every day and. Every day. Most of the, and hey, they have barbecue places. They have everything that you can think of. Let and there's nothing you, I can do about it. Can I ask it. you a question? Are you ever inspected by yep. the health inspector? I How am. often are you inspected? Uh, Is I your have, letter in the window? My letter? Yeah, your, your the grade, grade. Your grade. The grade? Uh-huh. Uh, we get a paper. We don't get a grade letter. I mean, we get graded, but we don't have a letter that we put out. It's a, an inspection sheet that we have to have in our truck with us. So but you we don't have, have to have your grade posted because we were told you have to have a prominent <coughs> Because you're... Well, and then that's my question is that, I mean, are these other trucks inspected? They're supposed to be to even have their license. Absolutely. I mean, they have, I mean, I am. I can tell you that I am. I, get I, I, I probably get checked more than you all do. You get checked every six months, right? Yes. All right, I get checked probably ten time. times a year. It doesn't matter. They just pop up. I get checked at least ten times a year. When I go to Owensboro, I get checked at an event Fourth of July. I get checked. I get te I get checked. I bet you ten or twelve times a year. So, so tell me when you go to Owensboro, do do you go? Do you have to pay anything when you go to Owensboro? You have to pay your whatever, business license. You have to pay your business license. Uh -huh. Okay, but do you have to pay, since you have employees with you, do you have to pay their payroll tax, tax over there? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, their <coughs> occupational I tax. I you're supposed to. Anything like that? If no. I if I was to go do hair in Owensboro, I would have to have a, a separate business they, license and occupational tax. Within Owensboro, they changed the rules for food trucks because nobody was getting their license anymore because they were charging eight hundred dollars a year to have a food truck, and they changed it all because they couldn't get food trucks to come in Owensboro because the way the prices that they had for it. Right. But that has see, a hundred dollars. All right, right, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it has nothing to do with what I, I'm just yeah. trying to get. Um, I'm just trying to say that. No, I understand. Right. The um, owner of the lot. Does anybody the else have anything at all? If not, we're going to go to the council's discussion. If anybody if has anything to... One, one more thing. He, yeah, he made a good point, and I know him, and I talk sometimes. The respect thing. So you, you, you're going to pass this. I get it. Big deal. Every, every city's got food trucks, right? So so how do we do it wisely? How do we do it? How do we do it in a manner that you don't bring in something that's direct competition? That's difficult. Right. right? Because... And I don't think any of the, the council or myself is not looking out for the best interest for our businesses. Um, I, I see, I see it and hear it, so I understand that as well. I, mean, I do. Um, does anybody have any discussion on the council? I feel that it's absolutely worth revisiting. What's in this current ordinance? I'm not in agreement with, but I um, think it's more ample time for more discussion. It's okay. I believe in equity. I believe in you know comparable occupational tax, different things like that. I'm not opposed to raising the rates. I I don't like the idea of limiting the amount of time that someone can come here and providing all of Hartford citizens freedom of choice. Um, Maybe, I don't know if there was a city calendar to schedule this food truck. This So we just know when people are coming. Make yourself known. Um, but I think it, it needs to be more discussion about making it equitable, but also fair to all citizens. I, I will point out, it doesn't limit the, num the number of times. The health department does. Oh, okay. I was going to say the ordinance does. Right. Well, I thought based on the fee, it said so many times per year based on this fee, or... If you pay $100 a month, you can come as many times as you want. Okay. Okay, well...
you just can't stay in one location past two weeks unless you leave for three days and then come back. That makes sense. So who's getting a hundred dollars? The city. city. But you're complaining about you getting equity into your business. So if I'm giving them a hundred dollars, how's it going back to you? How's it going to help either way? What we're saying is that if you have to do that every month, then you might think, hmm, okay, maybe I only go five times a month instead of going. It's not going to change my mind. No, yeah, you also, absolutely not. But you are because also Because I feel local. like the people in the county should have that choice to pick different things to eat. I don't want McDonald's or Burger King all the time. I enjoy having slick back sometimes. It's the, and then if we stay local, our money does go back into the county. I shop a ton in the county for supplies and stuff for our trailer. But I try not. to stay local. I pay everything we need to pay. All of our fees are up to date. Everything. We still get inspected by the health department. But we're not talking about just local. We're talking about other people who come in from other places. Right. And, and that's more understandable here. because it's not the same as all of our local people staying local. But I guess they choose to go different places because they're again offering their food to our county. Well, and they are. Those places are invited by someone that either lives or works in Hartford. Sure. So, what about a different rate for outside the county people? That's up. I mean, that's again worthy of discussion. So, so, I, Mayor, if I may, so I have an I have an opinion, and kind of like Stacia, as this ordinance is written, I'm a no because I think we're. Let's just face it, we're, we're all here targeting one group, and that's the, the food truck industry. Or the, you know, We're not talking about you know, uh, the flea markets. We're not talking about peddler license. We're, we're targeting the food trucks. I feel like, and I brought it up during the very first reading of this, whenever we, this ordinance first came out, uh, we, have like, we have eight categories in this ordinance. Well, four of these categories have a yearly fee. We're offering a, year, a yearly fee. So I feel like that the ordinance ought to offer a food truck a yearly fee, not a monthly fee, not a $50 a month or a $100, you know, if you want to come twice a month. We, I, I say a monthly fee. Uh, also, as reading, just for instance, I have... There's, there's been a contractor in my neighborhood this week working on a house. I don't see anybody in here complaining about this contractor. You know, we're, we're targeting food trucks. Uh, I kind of looked at Sorehead. I looked at your guys' menu. Uh, just for instance, you know, Slickback has a barbecue. They, they do barbecue. You, know, that's the, you guys have one option that would maybe conflict with Slickback. You guys have that. Hartford's Hartford barbecue sandwich. You know, uh, I don't see anybody's menu that you guys are doing pretzel bites or pretzels or anything like that. So I don't see the competition for Annie Ann's pretzel truck coming in here. It's money spent. Mr. Renfro, we're not talking about competition. That's the American way, okay? That's the free enterprise system. We understand that. What our problem is, is it's not we pay so much money and Karen and I have done everything we can to you know try to give the city ideas to make it a better place to be that's my thing when you all do city things who do you come to do you go to those food trucks or do you come to the brick and mortars that are sitting around town when who do y'all go to when people when, want well, donations so, for fall festivals when people want donations for their city activities when people want donations for the football team or the swim team who do we they have go no to? control over yeah we have we don't have any control you know, over just like no. mary bell was saying we don't have any control over who comes and visits you for a donation no, no, no but i'm saying though but if something is going to the food the but brick and mortar places, do you not see that maybe price. some some of these organizations are coming in for food or for fundraisers right they make a percent uh, we've been contacted I've been contacted for a, uh, a food truck to come in for to do a uh, an event to support Ellis Park renovations you know so so 
the people are coming in. I, I don't know what you said back there, but, you know. Well, my, th my point is, like, when the city is going to do something, like the city, like you all are going to put on a festival, who do you come to first? Well, ask? I don't know. I'm new to the commission, so well, I don't I'm know. I'm saying because, I mean, they've come to us. They come to all the clients downtown. They go to Glenn. They do go we to the ask you store. for money when we do they that? They want us to put our, they want at, not necessarily money, but our work, do, do, I mean, planning the, the being a, being We okay, ask you people if they want to be involved. I know that. But. Do we ask anything out of the ordinary from you? We don't ask you for money. We net, you know, if we're going to have an event, we'd like to have the stores open. But we can't mandate that you do that. No, we can't. You know, it's like, will you all have a fire pit? Will you all, you know, we've went in with the other businesses and will you all play for, pay for the bouncy house? We've made quite a few donations in, in and for we the appreciate city. that. And y'all have been a really good help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I had mentioned this prior, but due to the fact that uh, I missed last month's meeting, I don't know if it was brought up or discussed or anything, but this is not my idea. Uh, I rented a, um, a shop in Owensboro Mall, and I was called a filler store, uh, which means that uh, at any time, a full-time store could come in, they would bump me to another location. Because of that, a full-time store was $5,000 a month. I couldn't afford that. But a filler store, I only had to pay 1000 But the problem was, is when I had a filler store, I had to turn in my receipts for the month. And based on the amount of revenue I brought in, I had to pay the mall 10%. So what I'm suggesting is that these food trucks that are coming in from out of county, and I believe you're in county, right? Food trucks are coming in out of county, then they would have to, and this would be difficult to monitor, I understand, but the amount of money that they, uh, revenue, that the city would charge them X amount of percentage based on their sales for that month. Now, it would be hard to regulate and it might not be a perfect idea. But if they uh, came in, they did $2,000 per month, well then 10% of that $200 would go to the city to help our community grow. That might be an option. I don't know. Thank you. Well, and just to finish my train of thought here, and the reason the reasons why I'm a, not against this ordinance, but as this ordinance is written today, also kind of like the mayor said earlier, how are we going to police it? Uh, if you read the ordinance right now on page nine in A above, it states it shall be the duty of the code enforcement officer, okay, the Hartford Police Department, designated city representative. Who's that going to be? The mayor and or the city attorney to enforce the provisions of this ordinance. And they're called the enforcement staff. Well, I don't remember us ever discussing having an enforcement staff. I don't know if this was from the previous ordinance or if this was, you know, discussed, you know, outside of the city council meeting because I don't remember us discussing this at the very first meeting. We didn't. That's been and the ordinance since 2010. The only addition was that underlying part, and that was Mary Bell's notes to me asking for that to be defined. Okay. And then my last is kind of like you, you brought up, Miss Ward, is about being in a certain distance from a brick and mortar or an established restaurant. I think we should have that. Uh, I know some of the, like Orangeboro, for instance, they have 100 feet. A, a food truck or a trailer, a mobile unit can't set up within 100 feet of an established restaurant. There's nothing in this ordinance that protects you guys from that. So, out of Slickback, uh, he says he doesn't set up close to your restaurant. Well, that's just, I guess, him being polite and respecting your business doesn't want to take anything away from you. Now, 
I don't, I don't know about any ends, you know, in the IGA parking lot or anything like that. I don't know the distance there, but uh, I think that needs to be added in this ordinance as this ordinance is written right now. So those are the main su subjects that reason why I will vote no on this ordinance tonight. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask for a motion. To accept the ordinance of the 2023 business license. I make the motion. I have a first. Mary Bell. I don't have a, I don't have a second. Then that's I'll second. All right, I have a second by David. Roll call vote, please, Lisa. No. David. Yes. Bro, that he's already he made the motion, so he won't have to yeah. stop it. Right. right. No, he gets a vote. Stash. No. 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 Okay. Motion. Okay. Okay. Motion. Does it need to come in the form of a motion to revisit the writing based on our discussion? Or do we need. Um. Chairs? Can I speak with you for a moment? Who? Can I speak with you for a moment? Me. Chairs on personnel matter. Yep. Did you copy the concurrence or did the ones that are? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You need so, some? Yeah. I gave some to I gave all my blank ones to Dad. Okay. So okay. No, no, sorry about that. No, it's something to have a sidebar. I wanted to make sure that I wanted to explain to the mayor for safety motion because it brought this up. Yeah, so basically, just for the public's knowledge, um, if she's making this motion, it'll be it'll have to go into another ordinance first and second reading as well. And I highly recommend that we do it right because it, it is a process to and we've wasted a lot of time on this, so I do want to see what we can do to accommodate everybody in itself, whether it's the food trucks or our businesses here in Hartford. Everybody's important to us. So. Is she withdrawing her motion? No, she's not withdrawing the emotion art. Okay. No. Did I word it right? Do I need to make it formal? Well, if the motion failed, if the, if the ordinance failed, if you're wanting to bring it again, a new ordinance, yeah. then basically what needs to happen is you can you don't have to make a motion to discuss more unless you want to. I mean, just want right. But that's what I was trying to explain is that, you know, if, since this particular ordinance is failed, <coughs> the way to bring it up again would be a new ordinance with two readings and getting it published right. and, and that thing. So it's, it's a process of having maybe like just discussions on it okay. and then telling the draft how okay. to draft it. Okay. Okay. So I do understand, yes. I apologize. May, may I suggest something? Um, if we're looking to, to rewrite, in my words, uh, revisit, uh, could I suggest that maybe there be a side meeting or a meeting with some owners, even fruit trucks, let us all sit down together? Absolutely. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's, I think it's the best happy medium as far as like what you said. Yeah. So. So far, what you said about out of town, I hundred percent get it. I, 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 I see it. A lot to be said. I mean, right? Yeah. I'm not sure who they are, and I apologize. For that. We're fat bellies. I'm, I'm okay. okay. Fat. Cool. I, I like this guy. I don't even know him that well, but I like his food. I've been to his restaurant. Right. And, and you see what I mean? I'm not looking to kick anybody out. 
So what can we do? Let's right. Just, let's sit down and, and, well, and let, let the council sit in and talk about it too, Glenn. Sure. Yeah, we, we all we, have what, some what concerns. Maybe if, if you would interview and a couple of us and let us throw the ideas on paper, then y'all take them run with them. Uh, right. I'm just going to note that the council can't discuss this outside of an open meeting. Right. It has to yes. be Thank you. public forum. <laughs> right. So. Um, so yeah, um, I say we type it. Oh, wow. Might I suggest the committee? Yeah, I am going to. I'm going to form a committee. Um, I would like to put. Um, let's see. You can't have no more than two. Unless you call a special call. Unless you call a special call. Okay. Um, Mary Bell and Stacia, I'd like you to sit on the um, committee as well as far as Brian and what you all's names here? I'm Daniel. Daniel. I'm Kimmy. Okay. Well, yeah, you know. Okay. And um, Soreheads and Cup Cafe and Brian. Um, we'll do that as a committee. Um, Stacia, when, when would be good? How many people are you appointing to this committee? Two council? Two council. You can't have no more than that unless we have a, a special call meeting. Okay. So that's, I mean, we can have a special call meeting on it if you, if you would like. Well, and and then our guests And then come they can the, come here just, and that would be the only topic that, I mean. That might be the best I, option. I think, having, I think your best bet would be to have two appointees from the council meet with the representatives from the community and come back to the council with some recommendations and or summary report okay. and then you all can discuss it in open session when that happens. I think that probably is more expedient. Okay. Otherwise I'm going to be here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got all the names? Yes. Is everybody good with that? Thank you. I think it's great. Okay. Um, and we do hear it. Um, I appreciate everybody voicing their opinion on it. I mean, I will say maybe we could a sign in sheet with your all's names and phone numbers to coordinate with you before you leave. And I could send out a group text message. I will say I have another job and I work Monday through Friday and don't get home till five o'clock. So it would have to be after hours. I would like, uh, I'd like for you to head that up if you don't care. Okay. And you get the numbers and Okay. Get with Mary Bell and y'all set a date on that. Okay. Thank you all. Um, okay. This is something that we have to do every year um, on new business. It would be the reading ordinance number 2023-02. This is the financial budget that we have to set every year. Um, so, if everybody's had time to look at it as well, I'll ask for a motion or any corrections that you might see for, for the foremost. Huh? We just need a motion. Huh? We just need a reading. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have to have a motion. We just, okay. This is just the first reading. Right. I'm sorry. You just need a reading. Huh? need a reading. Yeah, just read your budget. <laughs> Can I have somebody read it out loud? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Mary Bell, will you read that out loud? Okay. I'm the only one. Scott. Ordinance 2023-02. An ordinance, an ordinance adopting the City of Hartford, Kentucky annual budget for fiscal year 7 23 through June 30th, 24. By estimating revenues, resources, and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, let's, let's see. Um, Chief, do you have anything to bring forward? Okay, we're gonna our our new uh, guy that we'll be sending to the academy, Dallas Dukes. Um, he will be getting sworn in tomorrow, um, so he's done all of his first and second phases. 
So we're going to try to get him on the streets a little bit to see the inner works of law enforcement. Um, so be wishing him the best as he goes through the academy. Um, what time is it going to be tomorrow? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock yep. here to yep. see him? Or is it okay yeah, to yeah everybody's him? fine with that. Um, Chief Griffin, do you have anything? Yeah, I'm going to let you all know that they own the new car truck. Uh, we traveled up to Capital West Park last week and did our final inspection on it. Minor stuff, nothing wrong, nothing made wrong. Got an email yesterday, it is scheduled for shipment to Shelbyville. That's worth it. Go to the shop there and you can just go through it again because they drive it from Appleton all the way down here. It's road test. So they go to the Shelbyville. Gets the test to the end, gets overlooked, and get some stuff installed on it while it's there. Right before the meeting got started, I got a phone call. The truck's at Shelbyville right now. So it's hopefully by mid, the end of next week, we will have it here. And I would like to have an uh, open house at the car station so everybody can look at it and uh, check, it, check it out. All right. I appreciate yeah. every heart. Good. Appreciate everything you done. Oh, and by the way, I'm really glad y'all bought this truck when we did. Uh, I did some calling around to see what that truck is actually worth today. It's a little over seven hundred thousand dollars today. And what was our? What did we pay? Five sixty. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Griffin. Uh, Ronnie's here with us. Um, Ronnie, would you like to give us an update? Um, yeah. I'm, Laura, I'm Ronnie, by the way. This is our I'm code. Right. This. I got y'all some uh, like a kind of this. report minutes if you'd like them. Thank you. I'm trying to learn all the codes. I, uh, I don't want to go do nothing that I shouldn't be doing. I, I experienced uh, some of them, the yards are high. I usually go out and hang red tag within three or four days they're taking care of them. I am working on the list of the abandoned property so some letters can be sent out about the taxes. Uh, I've spoken with Bob about a few of those, what needs to be done because I'm being told some of them have been set for seven or eight years and nobody doing anything with them. Right. So we're hoping to get some of those taken care of. A good drive would be good. Um, There's several. I think... Um, and I've, t I've spoke to Tara about this, and um, uh, if y'all have any, if y'all have any that you would like put on that list, I highly recommend that you reach out to um, Ronnie, and then me and Tara is going to get together on some of these. We've had a few years where the deadline was missed, so this is a good time. To yeah, so it's it's something that we need to. The letters have to be mailed out by May fifteenth, is my understanding. Yep. What's the best way to get in touch with you, Ronnie? Uh, 270-256-7513. Uh -huh. Thank you. 270-256-7513. Thank you. 7513? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to look there real quick. Uh, anything I can do for you, I'll reach out. Be more glad to. All right. Thank you, Ryan. I do Ryan. have one question. I one I'm working on, but abandoned lots, are those di under different stipulations for the grass? No houses, just lot. Generally, I believe under the ordinance, an abandoned lot is something that has delinquent taxes for a period of time, and I'd have to look at the ordinance to refresh my memory. But usually, it's no maintenance and and or delinquent taxes for a certain period of time. It's in that ordinance. So I'll have to look at it. And uh, Jeff or Lisa, you might um, you need to get her the information on that uh, committee that was formed for code enforcement, or it's already. Okay. Okay. And uh, Ronnie, I'd like to have, a, I'd like for y'all to have a meeting pretty soon with the committee. And um, you said that we'd have to change the ordinance if we ch change the fines. Is that correct, or yeah. is it the policy? Yes. No. The the fines are set by ordinance. So if you change the amount of the fines and things of that nature, we'd have to pass an amended ordinance. Okay. So I would like that to be something that this committee looks at as well. Um, you know, I, anybody can pay the twenty-five dollars and just maybe not clean clean the mess up. So um, that's something she'll get you the information, and um, 
There is on there, I will say, and, and I think I saw David with a, with a handout. The Kentucky League of Cities offering a code of enforcement. Yeah, I've on. showed her that. Okay, I was going to say, yep. it's very, very helpful. Yep. She yeah, I've showed her that as well. So, all righty. Mayor, yes. Yeah. Of what? Of the ordinance? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll get, them, we'll get them to you. All right. We, we need to make fines enough that people notice they're paying it. More than 20 dollars Yeah. I mean. It's like the Clay Street property. They clean it up for Absolutely. And the next day they pull Yeah. Back. So we'll get that information. Three houses that are run down. All right. Yeah. They maintain the yard, but the house, the roofs are falling in. All right. Does anybody else in the public have anything to bring forward? If not, I'll ask our council for roundtable discussion. Mr. Renfro, do you have anything to bring to the table? I do. Stacia and I, we met with uh, Jean Ann. Jeannie, Jean Ann. Jean <laughs> so with, uh, with Brad this, uh, this week, or, uh, talking about our the uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund grant that we, we uh, are trying to apply for to renovate Ellis Park. Uh, I've been collecting, we've been collecting some uh, estimates, uh, still have a few out there, but we're, we're going to apply for a 50-50 grant. Uh, we don't have to put cash in the game versus... In-kind labor. Yeah, in-kind labor, forced labor estimates and, and all that stuff. But so the total we came up with, with all of our estimates and improvements is like $196,000. Uh, and that's to include lighting, field uh, work on the baseball fields, fencing, uh, playground equipment, resurfacing the basketball court, and I think there were some other things that we've already done, like uh, bases, uh, and just some pretty much some cleanup and uh, fixing some stuff that is there. So we we have a. a, a Couple hit, couple things that we had to do, uh, which we've already been working on. We needed to get the deeds to Ellis Park. I went over, the, got those. Uh, we have to take pictures of the things that we're requesting to be repaired or replaced. We have to take pictures of those, show those, uh, and then there's also we're we're kind of confused on uh, public, I guess, participation. Uh, there's a couple gray areas there, one being social media, one being uh, there's a, a concurrence form that we can get citizens or people that are playing on the park, users in the park, uh, if they agree or disagree with the improvements. Uh, so we've, we've already started doing some of those. We've been collecting some of those around. Uh, but her thing is... Uh, of course, the more public that are interested and in in agree with will we'll better help our chances on getting this grant approved. Uh, Sir, about a year ago, and here again, this is one of the things that I helped in for the city, we did a public thing for Ellis Park where we, three citizens, I even stood out in the rain and begged people to come in and talk to us about what they wanted to see there at Ellis Park. And so there should be some kind of paper or something somewhere that lists things that the public wants and yep. things that there the is. public approved that we talked about when we were there. There was a poll. And there yeah, is. Yeah, there was a poll. And it's actually still on the Hartford City website. Yeah. The Ellis Park improvement there, too. That is still there. Uh, and it and it was a part of a plan that we had. In, we had an engineer come. We got estimates. Post-COVID, that estimate doubled. So we are now piecemealing the project because of cost. And um, Grad has this grant that's willing to help us. So we're aware of what the community wanted. We're trying to meet in the middle of what the community wants and what the city can afford, right. plus the grant money. So. And anybody that lives here ought to be able to fill out one of these And forms. I was going to say, if you live in our uh, if this you gym. live in Hartford and you would like to uh, show your support, we ask for this concurrence form. You should basically fill it out that you agree or don't agree with the Ellis Park project. This, they submit all these for the grant. It just shows the, the city's buy-in. 
And once I get okay, he mentioned that I'm going to see if we can do social media and count our likes, shares, and comments as part of the support for the Ellis Park project. So. Thank you. Uh, some of the things, I give Jeff kudos. He threw me in there, but he's gotten all the estimates. Um, I'm gathering a history of Ellis Park. That goes in the grant application as well, and I've reached out to Chad Schatmeyer, which is a Hartford, Ohio County historian. He's getting me something together, and just once we get to go ahead, I'll share on social media what I can. Um, is there anything else, Jeff? Uh, do you talk about the uh, the business meeting. We have to have a okay seven public hearing. Yeah. Public hearing. Uh, it has to be announced seven days prior, and we're going to try to make it our last May meeting. We'll let the public know, anyone that can come, either voice. So do y'all want to do that at 4 o'clock? Do y'all want to set that now and have a public hearing at 4 o'clock? About 15 minutes before. Yeah, yeah it won't take that long. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I've been a part of some of these. Yeah. You don't need an hour. Yeah. And Jean, <laughs> Jeannie, We're with, good. Jeannie with grad, she comes so. and she presents the project. Uh, there is some work that they've already done, and kudos to them. Um, the in-kind work that we do, though, and we ask for reimbursement or are part of the share of the grant grant funding, we can't do after this until after this grant is approved. So anything we've done is not so far is not retroactive toward that. Right. So we need to keep, keep that in mind. Right. And it could possibly be May 2024 that we even. Some of these grants take that long. I've got a grant open now that I'm closing right now that it took two years to get the money. So let's keep that in consideration because it, it, they literally set up her in Frankfurt for that amount of time just to be signed, yeah, or nay. So just be prepared well, on that. Also, I'd like to appreciate Jason and the city workers. They, they have been up there. They took out all the, the broken equipment, mm -hmm. playground equipment, you know, for no kids can right. you know, get injured or hurt. Uh, we've been doing cleanup. Uh, Jeremy Crow from Owe County Sports, they've kind of taken over scheduling the ball fields. And I don't know if you guys passed up there now, but there's kids out there on the fields now, you know. So there's getting slowly but getting life back into Ellis Park. Uh, and so it's, to me, that's, that's the heart of our community yeah. right there, that park. And I thank everybody. I thank everybody here and the public. Um, they know the need of it. We've sat on it long enough, and let's just take actions and move forward. So, thank you. Uh, Mr. Coleman, do you have anything? I'm just proud of our police test force, <laughs> and I'm proud of the maintenance. Because they doing, I'm hearing that people are talking about how they, they're there when they need them. <laughs> and our water department, the reason I'm bringing them up because I'm over them. <laughs> so I want them to know that the people are talking about the water department when the water's, some of my guys was out there till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning working. <laughs> and when we need them, they there for us. So I want us to know that, and I want the public to know that we here for y'all, whatever you need. And thank you, though. Thank you, Colin. Stacia, do you have anything? I don't have anything. Thank you. Jerry, do you have anything? You've been awful quiet over here today. Well, I, I don't have a whole lot to say, but I do like some of the things the city's been doing around the city, and I've noticed them, and they're doing a good job. Everybody's doing well. Um, everybody says how good we're doing, but it's all of the, our departments that's right. doing so. Mm -hmm. Uh, kudos to every one of our departments. So thank you, Jerry. Mary Bell, do you have anything? To... Of course I do. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Everybody get comfortable. I'll make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. I want to give kudos to the gentleman who did the work cleaning up the park. It looks really neat. It, uh, it uh -huh. just was quite delightful to go up there and sit on one of those steps and Look around. It does look really good, and uh, and I have to say, Jeff and David and Tony and uh, yeah. the Jeremy Crow and City Maintenance, uh, um, it's a joint effort with everybody. And yeah. you know, I feel like maybe one of these days soon we can have a volunteer day, and I, th I don't think there would be a problem getting people to help. So, 
Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm like Jerry. I'm proud of what the city's doing. I mean, we've got the new fire truck, and that's just a real plus. Police departments adding on policemen, which should have been done. Yep. And it's just great. Yeah. So we've got a mayor that's moving us along. <laughs> Tell me. No, I'm good. All right. Mayor, I'd like to, to I don't know if it was the city or the county or a joint effort, but uh, I'm very, very pleased to find the city. Uh, Blacktop paved over on Iron Mountain Road. Um, that that My is. My car is very happy about that. Yeah, so that is something um, is in the works too. I will bring y'all forward on this. I do have a bid for that. Uh, we put it in the newspaper this week. It'll be at the next meeting, and we have some MRA money that I would like to blacktop from Oakwood to the Y and just read blacktop from all that section. So that'll be at the next meeting. So, do what? Yep. I got a question. Um, I have some old American flags and some military flags of my dad. And we change them out. And I know there is a proper way in which uh, to actually dispose. Yeah. It's right at the community center as you walk into the entrance. There, there's a big plastic red flag area. If you give them to me, I can take care of them. Okay, I was, I was going to say if we had a, a event of a flag day yeah. that we can get the community to bring in their old flags. The local Boy Scouts, yeah. in conjunction with the VFW, usually do that. They okay. have a ceremony Great. and Great. everything. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, it's already taken care of. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right. Um, if that's everybody, I'll ask for a motion to close this meeting out. I'll make a motion to close. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh. Don't leave.